Okay, so last video we talked about imputed stuff and it just got kind of weird. So we're going to go ahead and skip on to chapter six. So anyways, now chapter six opens up with, wait a minute, what am I doing? No way I'm skipping this. This is some good stuff right here. So pay attention because I don't want to lose you. So here we go, part number two, two on chapter five. So here's where Paul is going to hurt your feelings a little bit. I never did. So in order to further understand what Paul is telling his audience, he goes right at it. He's, he's kind of giving them the knockout blow. So remember in chapter three where Paul said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, he is further insulting his audience by saying they are all filled with sin. Kind of like a disease. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Now this is extremely important to understand because if you don't get this point he's making, then you will have a very hard time understanding your need for Jesus. So let me break it down for you a little bit because now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of the gospel. Your destiny is calling out. It's time to start living large. No, not him. So imputed sin and imputed righteousness means it becomes a part of you, like down to the DNA. Mr. DNA, where did you come from? From your blood. Or as a theologian would say, it's been added to your account or reckoned to you. I didn't ask for any of this. Now for further explanation, the Easton's Bible Dictionary says this super fancy word basically means that the sin of Adam is passed down to all his descendants, or basically the human race, and is reckoned or considered theirs because of and because of this they are considered guilty it's just not fair but wait there's more the righteousness of christ is imputed or passed down to those individuals that believe in him and therefore his righteousness is considered theirs or better stated our sin is given to him and his righteousness is given to us however because of who he is he has the power to forgive sin so in other words, that Jesus takes all the bad and makes it good. And all by faith. The just should live by faith. Hello. Now the sin disease that we have is further explained in Romans chapter 7 where Paul identifies himself as a sinner and a man that cannot stop sinning. And that's good news, believe it or not. Hmm, this looks new. Think it's safe? What is? Because if Paul cannot stop sinning, and Paul's a pretty righteous dude, then when I stumble, it means I'm gonna be okay. But let me take a minute and make something perfectly clear because we have a lot of bad doctrine floating around. Now, just because Christ has given us righteousness by faith doesn't mean that we can purposely go on sinning. That's important to understand. Otherwise, the entire point of chapter 6 is lost, as is the remainder of the New Testament. It also doesn't mean that it's impossible for me to sin. That's a false doctrine as well. But it does mean that Christ has taken away the eternal consequences of our sin as long as we repent and believe. Make sense? See, in other words, you're still human. So you have the ability to sin. You have the sin nature within you, and you can still sin. But God has justified you because of your faith, or better stated, He has forgiven your sin because of your faith, and given you righteousness, which is the requirement to be with Him for all eternity. So why do I keep harping on the word given, you know, given righteousness? Because we have lost sight of the simple doctrine in our modern day. Let me ask you, is there anything that you can do or give or even say to God that will make you achieve his level of perfection and holiness? No, no, no. In other words, you can't do it. And by this, you become children of a father. Or better say it, daddy's got your back and, and you just have to believe in dad's solution to the problem, just like a child of God. Make sense? Well, that's all for now. We'll see you all tomorrow where we're going to hit on chapter six. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.